Boris Effect Optics is more than just a collection of image filters. I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effect, and I'm going to show you how you can build up some more interesting uh, and you know, intricate effects by using multiple filters and masking to layer things together. Okay, we're going to use the same image that we started with in the previous exercise, but we're just going to start from nothing and build up something a bit more fun. Okay, so I'm in the color category here, uh, and I'm going to just sort of try to, to bring in and, and shape the light a little bit more than we have at the moment. So I'm going to use a low contrast effect here, and this is now applying low contrast uh, to the entire image. Uh, I can come in, I can maybe find a, uh, a preset that I like, we'll, we'll take it quite far, we'll go low contrast 7, and you know that's a pretty good start. If we take a look at the layers up here, when we have a layer selected, we can see it's outlined in green. We'll also see that the, the little screen here has a icon with a pen through it. This means that this is the effect that we are going to be editing. And at this point, I can change the blend mode of these effects by clicking and then maybe just using the up and down arrows just to go through and see if there's a blend mode that I particularly like to bring this through. But actually, I'm quite happy with the blend mode here being normal. I can also take the opacity of the uh, overall effect down. So sort of be blending that back, going from 100%, which means we're at 100% opacity, so the effect is completely shown, all the way down to zero, which means we're completely transparent on this particular layer, which means the effect has no um, effect at all. And um, we'll just keep that at a hundred because I want to show you there's another way of isolating or limiting an effect. If I click on this button up here, we're going to be able to add a mask. And masks are different ways of limiting the effect to a certain area or a certain um, you know value of, of pixels. So we can do something like a, a gradient or in this case, I'll choose a spot here, which I can now move around. Now at the moment, I have no way of seeing what that mask looks like, uh, and this might be the same with you. Uh, if this ever happens, we just click on this button up at the top of the viewer, a little um, target button, and now all of a sudden we get our on-screen displays so we can start to interact directly in the viewer. And instead of toggling with the button, you can also use zero on the keyboard. So I can bring this up to the top, and I have two circles to work with. I have the hard edge of the mat, which is the inner circle, and I have the soft fall off, which is the outer circle. So I'm gonna keep the hard part quite sort of low, and then just softly fall off down here as well. At any point, I can see what this mask is doing by clicking on this button here, or by hitting M for mask on the keyboard. And we can do a lot more with masks as well. If I come up here, I can actually just uh, duplicate, disable or delete my mask. I'm going to just disable this mask here because I want to show you how we can work with multiple masks and then mix those together as well. So I'm going to disable that one and I'm going to come into Easy Mask. And Easy Mask is a um, slightly different type of mask rather than have uh, some on-screen controls that we can just sort of select a particular area. An easy mask lets us paint in the parts of the image that we want to keep in uh, and the ones we want to take out. Now, it sounds like it's a laborious task, but actually that's where the easy comes into it. So we have our uh, actually a lot of different buttons up at the top here. I'm going to ignore all of these. I'm going to do everything interactively in the viewer. Uh, we can study these at a, at a later date if we need to. So I'm going to hold down my control or command key and I can click and drag to make my brush bigger or smaller. And you can also use the square brackets as you would do in other image editing software. Let's make this quite big. And I can just do a paint stroke of the areas where I want my mask to fit in. 
So I want to make sure that this low contrast only hits the background and doesn't hit our subject in the foreground. So we can just do a couple of very simple uh, strokes in there. And then I could change up the, the shape or the brush type up at the top here, or instead I'm going to just right click and drag to show the areas that I don't want to be affected by the filter. And we can just do that. And depending on your subject, you might have to do more or less work uh, than this. I can now press the cog to start processing this out. Or I could just hit the enter key on the uh, on the keyboard as well. So let's turn on our mask. Again, we, we can use the M key if we want to. And you can see this has done a really good job of um, isolating uh, the subject that we want. Now, anything that is white in this view is going to be affected 100%. Anything black is going to be unaffected 100%. And anything that's gray is going to be more or less affected by the effect uh, or by the filter, depending on how bright or dark it is. So if we want to touch up this a little bit. Um, let's make my brush a bit smaller by holding down control or command and then clicking and dragging. And then I'll right click just to paint in another couple of the areas where we need a little bit more contrast here. So I can be a little bit more refined and I'm going to just left click a little bit more around the areas where I want to make sure that those are kept out. When I'm happy, hit enter on the keyboard and that will now reprocess that mask. And I might have to do this a couple of times until we end up with a mask that we like. It's looking pretty good. So let's turn off our show mask now. Now these overlays, uh, the paint stroke overlays only show up when we have our easy mask selected. If I come into any of the other masks, you'll see that the display changes again. Okay, if I click on and off on the lightning here, this is going to show our filter on and off. So it's quite a nice way of doing a before and after. And let's enable my other mask again. So I'm just going to click on the drop down and go enable. And let's show those masks up. Now the masks themselves are processed from left to right. If I click on a mask up here, we can take a little look in the toolbar up at the top and you can see that we have our mask blending uh, in the first section here. And then we have whether we want it inverted or normal as this section here. Uh, we can also change the opacity of the mask as we need to as well. Uh, and depending on the mask, we might be able to stretch it or do other things to it or change the fall off in the case of the spot. Now, when we have multiple masks working, this blend mode or these blend modes up at the top here are absolutely vital for getting a correct mask out of it. Let's turn off the overlays for a second. You can see the normal value is just there to mix the masks together. We can choose the subtract. So it's going to take out the second mask from the first mask or we can choose the multiply which is going to uh, bring in the the darkest pixels over the top uh, and this actually is the one that we really want here let's let's take a little look so here's the different blend modes there normal subtract and multiply so with multiply turned on we're excluding the subject which is what we wanted to do while also keeping that nice spotlight in the background as well. Well, let's take it a bit further because adding in multiple effects onto the same image really is where uh, optics starts to get uh, even more fun. So if I come up to my layers and I just click on the plus layer button now, we're going to add in another effect over the top. And let's come in and we'll go down to Film Lab and I'll add in one of my favorite filters, which is Film Stock. So this is just a a nice sort of color thing to add over the entire image just to help bring things together. Um, and when it comes to some of these filters where there are a lot of presets, uh, the presets themselves have been sorted into categories. 
So if you only wanted to look at motion picture films, you can see those down there. Or, you know, movie looks, you have a number that you can start to work with there as well. And again, you know, we can just use the arrow keys just to move through to see if there's something that you particularly like. And one of the nice things I like to do with something like film stocks is not just apply it uh, as it as it is here, but use the advantage that we have with optics to come in and maybe set up a blend mode, something like soft light, and take the opacity of that layer down. Maybe we'll take that to 50%. So even as we're moving through the different presets, because we're using those layer blend modes and the layer opacity, we can get a very different look um, than if we were just, you know, uh, placing everything over the top at 100% and sort of just working our way from there. And I'll take lost in translation. I, I sort of like that. And maybe we, at this point where I figured out which one I want, I can change the opacity up a little bit here. Nice. Okay, so we saw how we can use the lightning to turn on and off individual layers. And we can always come in and, you know, rearrange layers if we want to. But there are other ways of doing um, sort of comparisons between different parts. So if we come back into the viewer, I can do an A-B test. And this will look at the current layer that I have selected. So we can see here with the, uh, the screen here, this is one that I'm previewing. And I'm also previewing the original as well. So you can see that's a second layer with a screen. If I turn the screen on for the next one, uh, which is my low contrast, we actually have all three visible within here. So we can just compare uh, any different layers that we want to just by coming in and choosing which of the screens we're, we're looking at. If instead of AB, we wanted to do a, a vertical or horizontal split, we can do that as well. And in fact, we don't even have to change really between vertical and horizontal. We're just, I'm just moving the, uh, the mouse around and you can see the split happening as I move through. So in this exercise, we've looked at how we can use a mask to limit an effect to a certain area and how we can start to blend masks together um, to create a more um, solid result. Uh, and that includes Easy Mask as well. Uh, and we've also seen how we can start to build up our effect into something bigger by adding in multiple effects using multiple layers and layer blend modes and layer opacity. I mean, what sort of effects do you want to see? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you're not using Boris Effects Optics already, remember there's a free trial version available at boriseffects.com but I'll see you on the other side.